Live from the happiest place on earth, this is Disney Movie Fights. Hello, everybody. Welcome to such a fun episode. You guys have been requesting this one for ages. It's an all Disney movie fights, and I'm so honored to be here. I brought in an expert Disney legend to help me judge this. I'm going to him first. <laughs> guys, if you don't know who this is, you need to go do your homework because I've looked up this guy forever. Uh, amazing critic, uh, renowned critic, bona fide Disney expert, and creator of the Walt Disney Treasure series, yep. Mr. Leonard Malton. Thank you for being here, Leonard. My pleasure to be here, Andy. Uh, you, got, you got to do a classic movie fights, which was such a fun to have you here. Oh. I had a ball. And you crushed people so hard in that show. I was like, I can't <laughs> oh, have please. you fight in this episode. You're please. just going to win. No, 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 no. So no. I'm, I asked if you yeah. would help, if you would judge right. today's episode. So Ju welcome. Judging is a whole different experience. I can't wait to do it. Yeah, so basically as this show goes, we're listening to the arguments of these three players who we're about to introduce. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to make the call. I'll help however you need me to help. I'll okay. keep the time going. All right. But I'll turn to you to make the final verdict based on their arguments. Okay. And these are the three people who will be fighting today. First up, she's a member of Thingamavlogs. You know her as Sarah snitch on YouTube, Sarah Sterling. Hello. So excited Yay. and happy to be here. Sarah, congrats for me because you were requested the most oh, off of you. Whether you honor. did that on purpose or not, congratulations. I did, I did a, sort of mini campaign. <laughs> <laughs> you did really it. When I put the here. feelers out, that no one got more requested, so thank you for uh, for doing this. Uh, you were on our princess bracket, too, so you, you had a, got a little experience. A little bit. Uh, but are you nervous here with Mr. Malton next to you? I'm a, li I'm a fan, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but excited. Good. Uh, second, I'm so excited to have her. You've seen her on YouTube, and she's been on Screen Duckies News. Uh, Jenny Nicholson. Thank you, Jenny, for coming. Yeah, Woo. thanks for having me. Jenny is a st as Disney expert. You work at Disney, right? Correct. So Maybe. You're sort of Maybe. an expert Disney. Uh, so Disney aficionado and uh, really big fan of your videos. Uh, if Thank you haven't you. known, your Suicide Squad video is what mm -hmm. most people discovered you on, right? Yep, Suicide Squad and if Ray was a Skywalker, but I talk about all kinds of things and usually not aggressively, so fighting's gonna be fun. Yes, but Disney and Star Wars are your, are your go-to things, yes, correct? Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm excited to announce we're doing something special with her soon here on Screen Junkies, so stay tuned. What but Jenny, be? I'm very excited to have you back, and stay tuned for more announcements. But yes, it's going to be fun. Was that something. an announcement? That was yes. a tease. It was, that was an announcement. It's an announcement that we're doing something. Stay right, tuned. Fine. Right. Yeah, She's so doing something with Screen the, Junkies. Yeah. I'm happy to, that we can at least say that. Uh, but get excited, because we are doing something fun with Jenny that you guys are going to be excited for. Um, but finally, he's been here. He's a he's a legend here on Movie Fights. You've gotten a good record now. You're doing really well on this show. Um, but he's all over you. YouTube, you know him. Uh, Andre Meadows, a.k.a. Black Nerd. Thank you for coming, Andre. Thank you. I'm glad glad to be here. And I am also glad that Leonard Moulton is not one of the competitors when you said he's going to be here. I was like, <laughs> I, just got, I love Leonard Moulton, but i got to go against him. But now I'm still <laughs> equally nervous that he's judging, so i got to oh, bring the game. game. You don't know how he's going to do I it. I know. Completely different. I Neither do I. <laughs> Good, we're on the same page. Uh, well, helping us keep track of today's episode on the f on the fact checking cam, as always, our champion, Mr. Dan Merle. Hi, <laughs> Dan. Hello, this is Leonard. gonna be good. Hey, is he like the movie fight sidekick? Like, like, would he? Were you the talking? Like the fun talking sidekick? Yeah, animal? I'm the sidekick sure. for today's show. <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, you know? I'm not that good. I'm more like uh, Tim, uh, Timon. I'll say I'm oh, Timon. Timon. Yeah. All right. That's still good. Uh, yeah, but you'll be keeping track today, helping us if we have any questions. Although Leonard probably could ask answer a lot of them, hopefully. But well, the, you know, you know, there's so much Disney minutia mm -hmm. that I don't claim to know 100 percent of it. I'm not bad. But uh, not 100%. So <laughs> you'll be better. Yeah, you'll be better having, than a lot of us. Having a backup is a really good idea. So if you need help, he's the man with All the right. internet. And okay. uh, keeping track online at, at hashtag uh, Movie Fights Live. If you want to watch along with Twitter, if you're watching on Plus, he'll be there following along the conversation and putting some polls up. Uh, this is going to be fun. Let's do this. Quick reminder the scoring is based on the facts, passion, creativity. This man will be listening. I'll chime in if he needs it. Uh, but I'm here just to keep the show moving and make sure Leonard makes the right call. You guys ready to do this? Yeah. Uh -huh. I guess so. Great. Before we we do I do have to thank today's sponsor so happy to have them today's episode is brought to you by quid and Dan you can display a little bit more of what quid is for those of you that don't know quid is an awesome new app on iOS and Android where you can collect cool stickers cards and toys for free all on your phone uh, if you use emojis or stickers when you text your friends quid has thousands of free ones including Rick and Morty Bob's Burgers Family Guy you gotta turn it a little bit more I've been Star Wars I saw, oh, I'm sorry. Looking at Star looking at the Star Trek big surprise um, uh, Five Nights with Freddy's Buffy the Van oh, Buffy. Plus, lots of Funko Pop figures you can collect, digital toys, 
dude, there's so much here that you can collect, um, and you can collect for free. New stuff released every day, and they just announced that Adventure Time and Steven Universe are coming soon. So go click the link below to download Quid and start collecting today. That's uh, Quid with a two Ds dot C O Q U I D D dot C O. And Dan is collecting stickers as we Look speak. A lot of cool stuff Empire. in there. Like there's Arrested Development stickers here. Oh, what's a, like a Gobe sticker? Yeah, a Job. You can get a Job. Job. Yeah. Frozen banana. Is that a wow. TJ you Hooker a, episode uh, I saw there? <laughs> <laughs> no, that went by very fast. Do you want a few Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So they got some deep stuff in there. Themselves. Right. Uh, they're fans of us, and we're glad they wanted to uh, promote here. So go support them. Quid, uh, thanks so much. All right, guys, let's do this. Yeah. It's happening. Come on. Let's get nuts. I want to fight you. You want to fight? Let him fight. Fight! Stop this fight, I'll kill you. I could do this all day. Time to fight. This question, round one, was brought to us from Team Satterboom. This was the most asked question. It's one we've actually done before, I believe, right, Dan? So this is a rematch. Yes. It's also one we did on a Disney bracket because we did, but we wanted to really, since we're doing a Disney fights, so we couldn't ask, not ask this question again, so we're doing it. Uh, for all the marbles, who is the best Disney princess? Uh, and we're oh. starting with you, Sarah. You're up first. You're going to tell us who you think is the best Disney princess. So I'm going to disagree with the bracket that I was on, which resulted in Moana being the best Disney princess, because I put Mulan. I find her to be the most compelling heroine that Disney has created so far. She learns a skill throughout the movie. Her story is not revolved around romance, although there is a romantic aspect there for fun as well. Um, her motivations are all completely noble. She does everything that she does for her family to save her father. It's not driven at all by something that she wants for herself, although you know, I'm not totally against that. <laughs> you know, people can do what they want. But um, I find her so admirable. Everything about her, um, she achieves maybe one of the greatest feats of a Disney princess. She literally saves an entire country, China, um, from the Huns. And she sees things out of the box. She is very creative in everything she does. She sees things that, like, trained army generals would never have thought to do. And she accomplishes a lot through those um, attributes. Great, let's hear what Jenny mm -hmm. says. What's your, who do you, you think, well, best I princess? Well, I selected Moana. Um, obviously another strong princess. Uh, the reason I like Moana is that she's very, uh, she feels very real and well-rounded. She's self-sacrificial. Uh, she loves her people. Um, and to me, it's really important that she displays such strong leadership qualities. I feel like a lot of princesses, you know their personality in terms of who they are in their personal life. But with Moana, her identity is so a part of her people and what being a ruler means to her. And at the beginning of the movie, before she starts her quest, she, she wants to go adventure, but she's willing to commit her whole life to staying on the island because being a good ruler and loving her subjects is so important to her. And um, she ends up, you know, helping them later, but she goes on that quest only to help her people. All right, Audrey, who are you putting in this? Uh, I thought about the first princess that I felt like had a very strong quality to her, so I went with Jasmine from Aladdin. I think that, first off, she was a princess that, while there was romance to her story, she made it very clear that she was not a prize to be won. She was not a princess that was wanted to be married off, but that she wanted to make a choice. She was very strong. She cared about her people. She cared about her father. She cared about Aladdin when he put down the Prince Ali persona and was just himself. And she also helped out uh, Aladdin at the end with fighting off Jafar, even going as far as to do unspeakable things as <laughs> far as far as kissing him just to just to just to create a distraction. And she's also of these three the one we spent the time with the longest because she's had two direct DVD animated sequels as well as an animated series that proves that she is a good quality character that you want to see more adventures of. So that was why I made the choice of her. All right, so Leonard, you're watching. They've done their opening. Now let's have them fight it out, yep. and then uh, tell tell me tell them obviously speak up if you need questions. But go ahead, guys. Free for all. Fight it out. Free for all. Well, all right. <laughs> Jasmine is much easier for me to discredit than Moana, so I might start there. <laughs> All right. Um, Jasmine, I love Jasmine, but she, her, her, her want in life to escape and be free, great, but she's very, uh, she complains a lot about a great life. Mm -hmm. She has a great life. She <laughs> is very ungrateful. She is what? ungrateful. She's like, I, I live in a palace, I have a pet tiger, I'm a princess, I don't have to want for anything. But I want to. I want to leave. It's very mm -hmm. like, come on. Like I She's can't like, relate to that. My palace is stifling. Yeah, it's like and too many subjects. Yeah, yeah. we're like, on the same page. Yeah, with no. this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. Also, she could have seriously endangered her people by 
angering every visiting neighboring prince by sicking her tiger on them. Mm -hmm. They could have killed them. They definitely offended them. And how is that going to work for public relations for Agrabah? War. Well, but that was because she was fighting back against a a very old rule of being married off when she's a person that has an independent choice. And now let's talk about your princesses. And I'm going to put princesses in quotes. Look, I love Mulan and I love Moana. I think they're amazing, very amazing characters. However, the question is, what is the best Disney princess? And to me, that means that it's someone that you see as a princess and then you think about the characteristics of them after. Mulan and Moana are not characters I see as princesses. I see them as strong individuals. I see them as very wonderful characters. But I don't think, when I think of the princess line and, you know, have that the official, like, Disney princess line, mm-hmm. a lot of those characters you see as princesses or becoming princesses throughout the course of their stories. And then you learn about the characters later. Jasmine is definitely a princess. There's no denying that. But it was her qualities that made her different from the princesses we've seen in the past. And it seemed like that was something they specifically wanted to do that then led to characters like Moana and Mulan where you don't even have to think about about the concept of the princess. And I mean, even Moana even says, even though Maui says it otherwise, she says, I'm not a prince, I'm a daughter of the chief. And Milan's princess uh, qualities didn't really come in until later. She was more about just taking care of her father and making sure that he didn't go back to fight, that she did what she had to do to help him survive. So those are the things I think about with those characters first. With Jasmine, I think about as a really cool princess. So. Okay, and here's what I say to that. Um, I definitely agree that it's weird when you say like, Esmeralda or Alice is a Disney princess. <laughs> Obviously, they're not. Um, however, if you look at princesses like Pocahontas or Moana, they are the female, younger, soon-to-be regional leader of their specific culture. It would be, it wouldn't make any sense to call them a princess, like for historical reasons and for cultural reasons. But they are the equivalent to a princess. Mulan's not a princess. You though, know who <laughs> considers Mulan a princess? The Walt Disney Company. <laughs> <laughs> But let's Mulan is an official Disney princess, according to Disney. She's a yeah. Disney string princess. Yeah. No, but she's out in have the official Disney no, like, princess lineup. No, you have to have like a 12 doll set before they start including right. Mulan. Right, and I'm pretty sure they like, were like... Go to <laughs> Disney.princess.com, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and she's on the front page, because she's a Disney princess. As is Jasmine, and Jasmine was there because she was named a princess in her movie, so she yeah. was there. I'm not arguing Lester, that any of these are not princesses. I mean, I don't want to go there, but, but honestly, I feel like there's another reason of, why Mulan is in that set. Of the three, Moana has not yet been made a Disney princess. She has not. She's not on the website. She is not on the website. That is However, true. However, <laughs> she is meeting children at Disneyland, which so visiting royalty always does. So, so, as All Jasmine. of our princesses are Jasmine did too. there. Jasmine Mulan. did too. I'm just saying, if we're going to like argue who's a Disney All right. princess Well, we've accepted them as princesses. Okay, what else do we got of uh, final thoughts here? To I'm going to go after call. role model status. Mm. I think it's not great. We already talked about Jasmine and how we have issues with her. But I also take issue with, um, as you said, she helps everyone at the end by distracting Jafar, by seducing him. And that's probably the only thing she does with any agency in the whole movie is seduce the villain while wearing a sexy harem outfit. So that's not awesome. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but hey, hey sometimes you gotta make the sacrifice but that was the thing though you know you, you if you're speaking on the best Disney princess as far as just the one movie I'm talking about along the lines of the movie what happens with that character in the toy line or in the franchise and what happens afterwards like I said Jasmine has been a very stable part of Disney because not only do you have the movie you do have that animated series and I think Mulan you cannot count too. that Moana has a Mulan has Mulan a sequel has, was yeah. horrible you know, uh, yeah. there's a sequel <laughs> had a though. horrible sequel uh, uh, but are but, you, are you considering the sequel canon to why you like Mulan? No, I'm just saying if you're going to be like, it's Mulan. great because there's multiple <laughs> no, movies, a, I'm like, Mulan. But, I'm not talking about, I'm, but there's also the series, and I think that had something to be said. If Jasmine was a character that was not really defined and not really well, interesting. Well, it's not Jasmine, it, the animated series. It's a lot of the But she's a major mm-hmm. part of the animated Iago's series. Iago's a bigger like, character Iago's, than Jasmine. <laughs> all the characters they like came back. I mean, if they didn't like Jasmine, she wouldn't have been in the series. They had to bring her back. <laughs> no <laughs> one's really attacking Mulan's like quality of character. I'm just going to point that out. Let's do that. Um, Mulan spends a lot of the movie not as herself, and as you said, although she is making sacrifices, she's not following her own dreams. I feel that she has a much less clear vision of what she wants and who she is. And it's interesting because Moana and Mulan are both movies about Mm self-identity, but arguably Moana is the one who really finds herself by the end. I would disagree because I think that Mulan starts off her story arc by, by with the song Reflection and being like, 
who who am I really? What do I want from everything? I know I don't want this path. And and she finds something that she's extremely good at by going down a different path, not because she was drawn to it because she needed to do it to save her father. And in doing so does really have like a self-identification moment in her movie. But it's not so but, much it's not like she's like, "Oh, I guess I always wanted to be a soldier." I guess it bolsters her confidence, but you still don't have a clear picture of where she's going when the movie ends other than marrying Shang. But again, I have to Right, that those are great qualities of the individuals, but that those elements of those two characters has nothing to do with royalty. It has nothing to do with them being a princess. You it's think just leadership has nothing to do with royalty. It's, it's Honor, not. It's not. Self sacrifice. But not. But not in the role of princess. That's in the role of being a fighter in the army. That was a role of being someone who wanted to protect her village and save her people. But that had nothing to do with their actual title on the. But what did like, Jasmine do as a princess other she, than say that she doesn't like she the ca- laws? She cared about. She cared about her land and she. She cared about her father. She was very, very she concerned about her anything about her people. Yeah. She doesn't even know how much an apple costs. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't she know anything. Did. She doesn't she know what happens. Well, she was when they break but, the streets but that's in the, Agrabah? Because she got out there because they, she was very contained. Because she got she out had, there because she was bored and then found out everyone was starving was and thought it, it was inconvenient it because was, she couldn't take an apple. Not true. It's because that she had a lot of strict ground rules applied to her, including being forced into marriage that she did not agree to because she had not been able to see her land. She wanted to see her people. Well, she wanted to get out there, and she had a wonderful companion like Aladdin to show that. But so she that, was like, it was like volunteerism. All right, I want to get their final thoughts. But is there anything you want to hear from them in their final thoughts, Leonard? No, I think they covered the, covered the ground pretty well. Okay, so let's give them their final statements. We'll go back to you, Sarah. Go ahead. Final thoughts. Well, I think the real competition here is between Moana and Mulan. Um, they're very similar, but I think the main difference is that Moana is driven to do this great thing for her people and her island, and there's like a little bit of self-interest in it. She does want to be on the ocean, and I think that is somewhat of a selfish motivation, whereas Mulan does what she has to do for very selfless reasons, and that's why she is a, just, they're very close, but Mulan's just a little. Jenny? I agree that two of these things are not like the other. Uh, <laughs> however, I would say the Moana of the two is stronger, not just in her character motivations and her strength, but also in just who more evokes the idea of a Disney princess. I would say Moana with her like sweeping ballads, the strong musical themes in her film. I think the total package just makes her a slightly better princess. Andre? I think it cannot be ignored that the princess part of a Disney princess is very important. As much as Mulan and Moana are great characters, you could take the princess element out of both of those stories and they would still be good stories about them just as individuals. But what we're talking about here is a princess. Jasmine's princess title is part of her character. I think it weighs importance. All right, Leonard, it's going to be you, but let's real quick check in with Dan. Anything we need to add before Leonard makes a ruling? Uh, yeah, just a couple things. Uh, you know, When we're talking about Disney Princess, there's, of course, the capital P Princess, which is the officially recognized, quote-unquote, Disney Princesses, and then the broader definition, which is obviously what we're going for here. Uh, a lot of people on, t- on Twitter, so not surprisingly, have their own picks uh, at uh, but with AK. Does Leia Organa count? If not, then uh, Moana. Uh, uh, at Cerulea says, uh, might not be my favorite, but Belle is the best Disney Princess Feels like a traditional princess with a modern twist. Nolan Dean, Ariel works for me because she's not a perfect character. She feels genuine because she makes mistakes, and that's relatable. Samuel Wong says Pocahontas, independent, open-minded, highly underrated, all around the best. And uh, Kid Anon, which may have cleared up this fight, says maybe it's time for for at Disney to change it from Disney princesses to Disney heroines. So there you go. All good thought. All right, we'll turn it over to you, uh, Mr. Malton. What do you think? I think there's something to be said for uh, the notion that. Jasmine is an actual princess. That Jasmine is, I mean, that's her title. That's how she's referred to in the movie. Uh, it, it, you know, it's not a small detail. Furthermore, <laughs> and I wore these things so that I would, you know, that, have some sense whoa, of authority. That's the scariest thing I'm Mickey Glover ever did. Uh, but I think the arguments against Jasmine as, as an ideal or as a role model princess are very strong as well. Uh, and Moana, of course, deals a great, uh, a great deal in the movie with her identity. Mm-hmm. I mean, that film is so much about her identity and where does she belong. And she really wants to be out on the ocean, beyond the reef, beyond what she can see on the horizon line. But she feels bound by responsibility and loyalty. Uh, so I get all that. But I'm going with Mulan because I think Mulan is, uh, first off, an underrated character in an underrated Disney movie, so I, I, I'm a sucker for the underdog. 
and and I think that she just champions all the right things in a, in a movie that uh, should be seen by more people and revisited maybe by more people who haven't, even young people who haven't yet seen Mulan, because that's we're going on 20 years now. Are you excited for the live action? No! <laughs> <laughs> No, come on. How about coming up with a new idea? Okay, what about that concept? A new idea. No, no, no. All right, I was with you. I was, I was not hollering at you. I know. I was like, oh no. I was, I, she, uh, I, I'm expressing my anger at the world. Okay, I understand. It's a fair, fair thought. Point. It is. But I think it's a great call. I agree. I, I just when she t- pointed out the two about how uh, uh, Mulan is more selfless, I thought that was a very good point she made. Yeah. Uh, so great arguments. Uh, you get the first point, Sarah. Mm. What did the audience poll say, Dan? A majority of the audience 51% agree that Mulan is the winner she carries it 51% 23% Moana 26% Jasmine so pretty even split between the two runners Jasmine yeah. All right. It's not surprising because, I mean, they're all worthy. You know, yeah. it's not all like, good. Yeah. All right, let's go to round two. This one comes in from so Joshua Pleb. Um, and this is fun because we're going to we're bringing the parks now. Okay. What Disney film, not currently represented by Disneyland or Disney World ride, most deserves one? So Whoa. take a Disney property that we have not seen in a Disneyland or Disney World ride and tell us what deserves it. We're going with you first, Jenny. What's your pick? Um, I had so many that I wanted to pick from, but ultimately I went with The Lion King. I think that it's such a high-profile film that was so beloved by the kids. It was like its generation's Frozen, essentially. Uh, Frozen immediately got a ride. Lion King is very underrepresented in the parks. I was picturing, uh, kind of similar to Peter Pan, a ceiling-mounted dark ride. Um, You could enter out of the cave from Pride Rock and sweep over the savannah and see all the bowing animals. Lion King has a lot of great locales. You can go out on the savannah. You can go into that Technicolor forest for Can You Feel the Love Tonight and Akuna Matata. Um, I also love the elephant graveyard. I think that would be a good meaty and scary scene. And maybe you could have like some drops or some daring twists and turns to make it a little more intense. Um, but nothing too intense that kids would be too short to ride it. Um, like watching their father die. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that well, moment? They, you wouldn't see it, but maybe you could see Scar on the cliff, and then you could hear the opening sting of Be Prepared, and then you swoop mm-hmm. into the elephant graveyard. So it's out of it's sequence, but it, it evokes yeah. the emotion of it. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Andre, what's your pick? I uh, went with something a little bit more recent. I think that Wreck It Ralph would be an interesting uh, ride or experience. There, you go. there he is. At- <laughs> oh, Wreck It! <laughs> it almost broke it. But no, I really do. It was also a very successful movie. It's getting a sequel, and it just w- brings something different to the parks a little bit. I mean, I love all the fantasy stuff, I love all the, the Disney and Pixar representation, but I think that this would be a good ride because you could experience being in the arcade like Ralph and his friends. You could experience going through the Wreck It Ralph game. You go through Heroes Duty, going through Sugar Rush. You could have a Sugar Rush ride or a Sugar Rush, uh, uh, like uh, whatever I'm trying to say, like go kart or something like that, something similar to the Cars ride. Uh, but you also could have an arcade there, an actual arcade. You could bring in a bunch of the classic games or some of the games that were represented in the movie could be there as a fun place to play and like bring the arcade experience back. While you're waiting in the queue? While you're waiting in the queue, exactly. Or you could have it like go along. And then with the sequel taking place on the internet, you could also have some fun experiences with that, which surfing the internet or, or having like photo stations where you could put yourself inside of different games or inside of different whatever websites that are going to be on Record Ralph 2. I just think it's a, a fun way to still bring the magic and fun of Disney but connect it to today's technology and I think it would be a great experience for the newer tech savvy kids and also for older audiences who remember the arcades, who remember the classic video games, remember those types of things and then you could also just have Ralph and, and Vanellope and walking around and maybe even Qbert. I would love to see Qbert or you know since Nintendo t- uh, has got taken by Universal maybe that Disney can work with Sonic <laughs> and get Sonic <laughs> walking around, but I think that would be a fun, cool experience for a different type of Disney fan out there. Sarah, what are you pitching? I have a very practical idea to pitch. It's something I've thought about a lot. We first have to talk very briefly about Splash Mountain, which is based on a movie that Disney no longer has in circulation called The Song of the South. Um, Since there is n- probably no children have seen Song of the South today. And so for that reason, I think Splash Mountain attractions at Disney World and Disneyland should be rethemed to Princess and the Frog. Princess and the Frog has almost no representation in the Disney parks, and it is literally perfect for Splash Mountain like placement in the parks. Like in Disneyland, for example, Splash Mountain is on the like cusp between Critter Country and New Orleans Square. New Orleans, the city that Princess and the Frog takes place in. There's a whole sequence in Princess and the Frog about going down the bayou, so it would work to be in a log in the water, and it literally is so perfect that I can't believe it's not happening. 
<laughs> All right, fight it out. Okay. Well, they, oh. <laughs> they are excited. Go ahead. I'm very excited because... Well, I guess I'm very angry because you want to get rid of Splash Mountain. I don't want to get rid of Splash so, Mountain. I want to retheme Splash Mountain. So let me just say that the Splash Mountain, as it exists now, was a beautiful, perfect storm of an attraction that will never happen again. It's full of animatronics because it happened to open at the correct moment to rehouse them in that attraction. If you got a Princess and the Frog attraction, it wouldn't have as many animatronics. Probably have like projection screens That's or arguable. something There's like so that. There's so many animals in it. <laughs> the Bayou scene and the French Quarter are both things that are already kind of covered in. Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, what we don't have in Disneyland, other than Splash Mountain, is the American South full of anthropomorphic animals. It doesn't make any sense, but that's part of why it's so good. Well, yeah. I mean, I I feel like I do get a little bit of a, a Lion King experience when I go to the Animal Kingdom portion of the Disney parks. Yes, there and, is an attraction. And there. Um, you know, it's well, a, well, it's for, a show with <laughs> rethemed parade But it could it could be re, it could be rethemed <laughs> as Lion King. It's, it's great. You know, spectacular. oh my god, Festival of the Lion King is it's, amazing. They literally just took the Lion King parade uh, and put it in a building. I and love they're like, Festival hey, of the Lion King. I bet happy. everyone out there loves <laughs> Festival of the Lion King too. Look, oh. all right. I mean, first off, it is kind of interesting that Lion King and Prince of the Frog don't have much representation at Disney Parks. That's another story. Ooh, sips tea. But I will say, if you're going to take what you may, what some may consider one of the more offensive Disney classic uh, movies with a ride, and you're going to replace it with the ride featuring the only black Disney princess, I don't think that's going to go over well with PR. Uh, and I also don't think it would, it would make a lot of sense. If you're going to have Tiana there, you already have a place. You have the boat, which they've already mm-hmm. done. And then you've had Tiana there. You've had Dr. 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 Felicity there. Yeah. You know, about the Mark Twain? Yeah. Yeah. But, but but hey, I'm sorry that Star Wars land is getting built and it has to be parked. But that's not that's not her fault. But it's, it's there. An even better character spot now that it's parked. Yeah, but the so. th- the thing about it is, you know, and and I hate to say it, I blame you. But <laughs> you know what? If you wanted a big part of Prince and the Frog, uh, maybe some people should have went and saw Prince and the Frog when it came out in theaters. <laughs> and Lion King was a huge success. They had every opportunity to do that, and they went, no, let's give it a, a parade instead. And that's it. We're done. So okay, I'm coming for you too. Oh yeah. I'm coming Can for I just him too. say that yeah. the Starcade was full of arcade cabinets? From Wreck It Ralph and Ralph and, it and Vanellope forever because it must not have done very well. <laughs> Here's the thing: what is the licensing nightmare that Disney mm-hmm. would have to endure to have an attraction featuring other video game licensed characters they from other companies? The same way that they dealt with it in the movie, they were they were able to get Cuba, they were able to get they Sonic, weren't they able were to get Mario until the second well, one. Who, Mario Besides, doesn't have an arcade. Park rights have not yeah, gone to Universal saying. for Nintendo. But we don't, it's hard. So we don't have to get the Nintendo characters, but that still leaves Cuba, Pac Man, Sonic, Street Fighter. I feel like that would be a very loud absence. They'd be like, oh. They didn't get the good ones. Well, then you, like, you would just <laughs> you feel it. I just think it'd be way too difficult to accomplish. Cheap. I don't think it's. It, it's it, like a fantastic. Wait, you're talking about Disney that has like Star Wars, Avatar, Indiana Jones. I mean, Disney <laughs> isn't able to like take over the Marvel rights for Florida. Like that's mm-hmm. too big of a thing for oh, them to. Yeah. Okay, like let's pretend that we do it. get the licensing. Yes. My. If I think Wreck-It Ralph ride, I think it's going to be like Midway Mania where you're like sitting in a chair that moves and looking at TV screens and you're like, oh. No, no, that's yeah, that's no, that's great. not true. Because the whole experience about the movie Wreck-It Ralph it? was that you were going through all the different games. So the ride would be in the same manner. You'd be able to but travel Wreck-It through. But Wreck-It Ralph is so kind of unsequential. It almost is just like a an anecdotal tour through different locales. But it and is connected by the fact that the arcade. And what could be interesting is with the ride is that you could almost have, you're in the same position, but you could almost have a different experience when you're going to different parts with, through the motion of the ride. So when you're in Hero's Duty, you can feel like you're in a shooter. And then when you get in the Sugar Rush, you feel like you're racing. Like you can do something really creative with that because you have the boundaries, of, you have the limitless boundaries of video games. And then when you're adding whatever's going to happen with the sequel, the internet to that, there could be a whole bit of, of, of fun with this that could also hit nostalgia for people who love old classic arcade and video games and the new kids who are into mobile games or into console games or into all the different uh, technology that they're into it's a nice melting pot of both of those with this franchise that is why this fran- that's why this movie was successful that's why they're making a sequel and that's why I think it'd be a cool ride and it would be something completely different we've seen princesses we've seen anthropomorphic characters we have not seen Disney magic and technology 
focus on the realm of gaming like this, and I think that a Wreck It Ralph section would like be great for that. I feel if you're gonna do a game, just do Tron. It's like cooler and better. Well, if Tron, uh, this Tron Legacy would have been better, then maybe they would have done that. But I think Wreck It Ralph was proved to be successful, and therefore it has. A great I want to hear a little bit more from Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to, to talk about Lion King, anytime the Disney parks have made Lion King animatronics, they've been horrifying looking. I so. like Parade Simba with his stumpy <laughs> little legs. <laughs> no, when I like he roars, him. his mouth like detached. I like that he like waddles uh, back and forth. Beside Besides, like, not to ruin the magic, that's not an animatronic. I, I feel know. like if it was I an know. animatronic, it would look a little better. Besides, yeah. like, that's a really old float that they've reused for a million things. Like, the technology's there. I'm look just at saying, the anytime I've seen them, they're look, not but, looking like, great. And I also Matterhorn don't think Yeti. you can do a ride with while well, skimming over Mufasa's death. And yeah. that's just horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you have projections of antelopes and just not show Mufasa. Ah, death. even like, oh yeah, my god, the, I'm just like, you, no yeah, one wants to go through that experience. You can dip in the track and you see on the ceiling above and in front of you like projections of antelopes running. So and you're scary. like, oh no, I'm going to get even run Even in over. the brief moment Mr. that it's in World of Color, I like, like it. can't yeah. emotionally handle it. Yeah. So I don't know. All right, let's go. Final thoughts. We'll start them. Do you have any questions you want to ask them on it or can we get to the finals? I think I'd better not, actually. <laughs> Jenny, final thoughts? Okay, I'm going to say uh, Splash Mountain stands on its own merits perfectly fine because it tells its own story in an insular way, and we shouldn't touch it, and even if we were going to make a standalone ride, Princess and the Frog, at the end of the day, just didn't make very much money, and I feel like even though it's a wonderful movie, it's probably not the most lucrative theme park venture. And Wreck-It Ralph feels a lot like a flavor of the month to me, like if you put in a Minions ride or something. It's a very noisy movie. It's kind of hard to rewatch from my opinion. So I want to go with an old classic and an old favorite in Lion King. Andre? A Flavor of the Month that is getting a sequel. A Flavor of the Month that <laughs> had a song used in the uh, Paint the Night, but are the, 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 the parade. But yeah, I think it's going to bring something different. Disney is all about trying to bring some different things. That's why they're doing Avatar. That's why they're doing Star Wars. And that's why I think Wreck-It Ralph would be a very essential part. Like I said, it's going to bring the nostalgia for old school gamers. It's going to bring the technology for new kids. And it will be something different for a different audience because we have princesses. We have a place where Tiana is already fits perfectly in Orleans Square. We should not replace Splash Mountain with Prison of the Frog because that would just be weird. And and Lion King has we have Animal Kingdom, we had its opportunity, and we have the issue with it being four legs. Uh, it just seems like Wreck It Ralph is the one that makes the most sense. Sarah? Disney fans have a tendency to not enjoy change at the theme parks. I've definitely been one of those people with different things, but Walt always said Disneyland will never be complete. And we could even keep one Splash Mountain classic and retheme the other one to Princess and the Frog because Tiana deserves more representation across the board, not only in the parks, but everywhere else. And it is such a good idea. Like, it's so ripe for retheming. I can't even handle it. And there's no saying we couldn't keep the old America Sings animatronics on the Princess and the Frog ride. All right, Dan, anything to add before Leonard gives his rolling? I was going through so much uh, history just to make sure that I didn't have time to, to pull a lot of suggestions from Twitter. A lot of people, though, uh, expressing uh, support for all of these rides. There is a Wreck-It Ralph ride that's rumored to be coming potentially to Tomorrowland, but has not yet been announced in place of the current Lilo and Stitch or Stitch ride that's there. And uh, I do have one tweet from at Jesse Malton that says, at Leonard Malton wore those Mickey Mouse gloves every year when he took me trick-or-treating. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Hi, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Leonard, what's your pick? Based on their arguments. Yes. Uh, a little bit of background for me uh, in giving my ruling. First off, I still miss the old-fashioned arcade on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is now just a store. Yeah. They kept a couple of the old Edison Mutoscope machines where you can put in a penny and you know watch old, yep. old fashioned films. But they, they've pretty much abandoned that idea to give it more retail space. So I, I've always been fond, I was always fond of that. It was one of my first stops on Main Street. So I miss that. Secondly, Lion King, they use that moment in World of Color and that same daughter who just tweeted goes, no, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're showing the death in the middle of this supposedly feel-good you know, parade of Disney moments. I agree with her. Uh, I think that's one of the problems with... with uh, and I want to say to all of you, Hakuna Matata. Just chill. <laughs> chill about this. You're getting too emotional about it. Much too emotional. I, I, would, I would never change Splash Mountain for the simple reason that it is this miraculous contradiction. Yeah. <laughs> that's what. It that's really the only is. way to describe it. <laughs> it, it, it celebrates a movie n virtually no one has seen, <laughs> uh, uh, unless you're smart enough to 
find the bootlegs that are out there. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting that anybody no. do no, that. No, that no. would not be a good idea. But it, it celebrates a great, great Disney film with great, great characters that were actually part of American folklore. Joel Chandler Harris created those characters, the Uncle Remus characters. Bear Fox, Bear Rabbit, Bear Bear. We're not going to argue political correctness now. We're just talking about that they exist and they were influential and popular. So I wouldn't want to touch that ride, uh, even for even for a good reason, mm -hmm. even to bring in an interesting character like Tiana and an, and an interesting culture that she represents. So I'm going with Wreck It Ralph, not because I'm such a huge fan of, of that movie, <laughs> but because I think they could find a way. These are the Imagineers. Yes. They could find a way to make it not passive, but interactive, uh, a way to make it more of an, uh, an experiential ride that doesn't necessarily have to draw on specific video game characters that already exist. And uh, how do they do that? I, that's why I'm not a man, I'm an Imagineer, because <laughs> they don't come to me for these ideas. <laughs> But I think that I think they could come up with something that would really be fun and fresh and original and make you feel like you're in a world of a video game. Yeah. I agree. There you go. Andre gets the point. Dan, what did the viewers say? Uh, the viewers, once again, Leonard has tapped into the zeitgeist. <laughs> uh, right now, 49% of the Twitter poll uh, vote for Wreck-It Ralph. 38% voting Lion King. Only 13%, unfortunately, <laughs> voting for Princess. Yeah, it was tough, because they all proved that Lion King also already has sort of a placement in Animal Kingdom. And yeah, the Splash Sorry. Mountain, that was risky, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop uh, talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to round three. Uh, this one comes in from Myra uh, Rinberg, Berg, sorry. Um, this is a this is a tough question. I, I good luck. Um, what was the best movie from the Disney Renaissance? That's the 1989 to 1999 period, Wowie. which was one? a resurgence of the uh, of you know that came back. Uh, so you guys each picked different film. Tell us which. Let's go through and just hear which films you picked, and then we'll come back to you, Andre. Andre, what are you fighting for? Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Sarah. Lion King. Lion King and Jenny. Aladdin. Okay, so with those are the three they picked. Those are the three we're, we're basing this on, based on the arguments. Andre, start us off. Um, all these movies are great. I mean, there's no question the Disney Renaissance was a great period uh, when it comes to Disney movies. So I had to look beyond that, and I thought, well, what's the movie that's not only a great movie, but also has a great piece in pop culture? And it would go, obviously, to the first movie of the Disney Renaissance, which would be The Little Mermaid. I mean, as you said, Disney was kind of in a slump, and The Little Mermaid brought... Uh, a new style to Disney while still being traditional, while still being honorable to what you thought of when you thought of Disney, and was able to create this brand new era for Disney animated movies that was just wonderful, that led to movies like Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and the Lion King. We, we, we may not have gotten those movies, or we may not have gotten them as good as we got them, if it wasn't for this movie. But then, as a movie alone, it's a great movie. It's a great uh, hero, Ariel, Ariel. It's a great story. All the characters, all the side characters are great. All the music is great. You know, it's a very, very fun movie. And I always put it this way. If it's a movie, an animated movie that my dad will watch, then I know it's pretty good because my dad does not like cartoons at all. <laughs> so uh, so he was interested in seeing that movie. It brought people, it, it took Disney out of that level of like, oh, here's just the movies for kids. But like, oh, this is a very entertaining movie that no matter what your age is, you can understand it. And inter get entertained by something about it, whether it's the songs, whether it's Sebastian and his jokes, whether it's the, just the animation of it. It just really is a good movie that really set the precedent of what Disney movies had to look like moving forward. So, therefore, Sarah, let's hear about Lion King. I view The Lion King as really Disney having found their groove after getting back into animation, starting with The Little Mermaid. I think it is like the pinnacle of the Disney Renaissance. It has th an amazing soundtrack. It has an all-star cast. It is, while all these movies are based off of like famous literature, it's based off of the most iconic literature, arguably Shakespeare's Hamlet. And um, I think, as, as you said before, it's uh, the our generation's Frozen. It was like wh whoever I talked to, it's like the the Lion King was the most hyped of the '90s. It was the biggest thing for all genders and all ages. Everybody was obsessed with it, and I think it was different than anything they had made even somewhat recently. It, it's not a princess movie. It doesn't even have humans. It's all animals, and I think it made it kind of universally relatable to all audiences. 
Jenny, let's hear about Aladdin. Okay, I picked Aladdin because I think the things that it brought to the table that were really new at the time kind of revolutionized the way Disney was doing things. Um, you had the genie in there. You had a com comedic sidekick character that was making modern pop culture references. He was also voiced by a celebrity, which at the time that wasn't really a thing to bring in a celebrity star talent to promote your animated movie. And, like, DreamWorks has made that their MO for every movie <laughs> ever since. Um you, you did also have like some great voice actors in there, but it kind of took advantage of talents of not only like Broadway stars and wonderful singers, but also the comedic talent of modern personalities that are going to bring in the parents and bring in the cynical crowds that maybe wouldn't normally see an animated film. Um, I also think every single song in Aladdin is completely solid. It's really good work. Um, I already love Alan Menken, but I think that's one of the best examples of like there isn't a bad song in there. Um, I think the characters are good for the most part. I said I wasn't a huge fan of Jasmine, but I love Aladdin. I think Jafar is one of my favorite Disney villains. Iago is great, um, not only in the future movies, but in this one. I love his personality. I love the comedy behind him. Um, so yeah, I just think all around, if you're looking at the total package, this one kind of epitomizes a great Disney Renaissance era film. All right, I mean, this is going to be really hard because they're it all three great right. films, yeah. and you all gave us three stars. So make sure you help us. Why is yours? Why is yours? Do you think better than the other two? Go ahead. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Argue against <laughs> as a judge. It's yes. so you, hard. Right? The, right? Andy said it right. Argue against the other two. Yes. Don't tell us why they're great. Well, here's the yeah. thing. I think <laughs> with both The Little Mermaid and Aladdin, the protagonists are are questionable. Um, like, it, it, I, I kind of just want to leave it there. It's like Aladdin's like a liar and a thief, and Ariel's kind of like dumb. And Simba and, was a guy. <laughs> and Simba was a guy who left Pride Rock and just hung out with Timon Dude, and Puma for several years, and Simba, then decided, oh, maybe I should come back Simba because this girl told me I should. Because he was like a five year old and was told that he was responsible for yeah, his but father's he was, death. But eventually, he became an adult. Yeah, but like you can't even imagine like what happens to a kid's psyche if they think they're responsible for their parents' death and are told to leave. But like probably like what's insinuated with Scar being like you need to leave. It's like everyone's gonna hate you or kill you when they find out you killed your dad. So instead, you do nothing and let them all st starve no, and suffer. No, he thought he was doing them all a favor by by like leaving. He's saving himself and just being like, I need to remove myself from this situation. My uncle Scar, who I don't know is bad, is gonna take care of everything, and I can just like be a recluse. You either. If, if we're gonna talk questionable, I just think that that's something to oh, be there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that's me said about that. Look, uh, and Aladdin is a good movie, but it's it's mostly known. It's mostly known for Robin Williams' performance, which is which is a great performance. But if you take Robin Williams, if you if you voice him with someone else, if you take the genie character or make it more subdued, that's pretty much going to bring a large dent to that movie. But that I, didn't happen. No, but I'm saying, but that but I'm saying, but if you're thinking about a great movie, I'm thinking about all the pieces work together. Your hero but works together, your villain works together. There are such great pieces in that. Jafar is great, the Sultan is funny, Aladdin's good. I think the only real weak link is Jasmine, or maybe Abu, but that's just because they don't like monkeys. <laughs> that's a personal bias. But see, I like. I thought Abu and Magic Carpet were great. See, I what? just don't like the <laughs> Weekly. Carpet is fantastic too. You but, have magic. You have these iconic objects, these iconic outfits. It has a different sort of visual vibe than the other medieval princessy style Disney movies. But you still have that coming of age story with a human character, which I do think is a major component of a lot of the films in the Renaissance. Okay, well let's let's talk about the music then, um, because with Aladdin you have people singing around, you have Aladdin and Jasmine sharing a song, and then you have. Uh, uh, Robin Williams singing a lot of his songs. With Lion King, you got <laughs> Timon and Puma singing a song, and you've got, again, musical numbers. In Little Mermaid, Ariel has a great song. Sebastian has two great songs. Even some random French chef has a good song. <laughs> you know, every one of the songs, and Ursula has a great song. So you, every major character in that movie has their moment to shine. So you can relate, where you can relate to Ursula, you can relate to Ariel, you can relate to Sebastian, you can, to him to his job. You can even relate to Neptune. You can relate to so many of the different characters, and also to Eric. You can relate to these different characters different ways. With the other ones, you have the certain character that is the lead, and then you just have a bunch of random sidekicks joking around to kind of surface the fact that maybe the story just isn't as good as Little Mermaid. I would um, argue yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the same. The same is true of Lion King though. You have like the mm -hmm. opening number. Um, Scar has a song. Timon and Pumbaa have a song. Simba and Nala have a song. And they don't sing the song though. They do in their heads. <laughs> their heads are singing but not it. with their voices. It's in Simba and Nala's voice. Well, and then if you're talking about the voices, yeah, and any voices that are sung by Simba are not sung by the voice actors, but other singers, whereas with... But uh, that doesn't take you out of the film. 
Well, it just shows it that sounds the, enough like him. That it shows that the talent of Little Mermaid was good enough to do everything. I'm just saying, all the, hmm. these all have great soundtracks. Lion King has an iconic moment that people will recreate with their pets forever. <laughs> <laughs> like "Party Your World" is an iconic Disney song, but people aren't. People are holding their cats how many, up. How many photos have you seen of people at the beach where they are, are, are on a rock somewhere <laughs> where they're just waiting for the tide to come up? Just yeah, so yeah, know. yeah. It's never as good. <laughs> as Aladdin Aladdin is well, that can't control nature. Rough, so it doesn't get as much attention, but that's just like Aladdin. He was an he was underappreciated gem. He was a diamond in the rough in the marketplace. So I think Aladdin has that in common with it. And I think that... All three movies in Aladdin's defense, I said the only negative thing I could see about it was Jasmine's kind of a weak character. But I think all three of these movies have really weak love interests. You're going to tell me Prince Eric really has that many relatable moments? <laughs> His character mission <laughs> statement is, I'm going to find her and I'm going to marry her. And that's that's it. That's, that's all there is. Aladdin is he doesn't ever really learn his lesson. Like, he lies multiple times throughout the movie and then never like really he tells one lie consistently it's a pretty big lie <laughs> he perpetuates it but it is one lie and that's it but and then he, he like, throws gold to peasants he's trying to help people with his lie yeah uh, but, but see that's the thing and that uh, yeah so Latin does not learn his lesson he tells his lie gets what he wants Simba leaves his family gets what he wants at the end he's and literally like I was gonna tell you <laughs> yeah, and she's like, like getting chained up and yeah. like, but he was gonna tell her. Was he? Yeah. We don't know. But the thing about but the thing about the Little Mermaid is the the ones that were arguing, which were the mer people and the humans, at the very end learned that there's some tolerance there. That mm. there's a way that all of them can relate to each other because they have similar things and therefore they now have a, a, a setup where now Ariel can be with Eric but she still has her family. Everything works out and now mer people and humans can, can coexist. They're working together. Were those lessons in Lion King? Lion King is just like, oh, you don't belong to us? Then get off a rock and Aladdin's just all about himself. Lion King is, Lion King is kind of, of a racist story about how everyone who's not a lion doesn't deserve food. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the circle of life and the food. We don't chain. need those hyenas in our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. They're just going to take all our food and Get our jobs. A, yeah. That's just about as. I'm just saying. You want to bring up like racism when you're arguing for Aladdin? <laughs> <laughs> all, all of the characters are within the culture. I'm just saying, like they had to make changes a, to the movie to make yeah, it. Yeah, they less had to change racist. their song lyrics. They're, they're really. portrayed in a positive light. I think it's a, it's a very, maybe not accurate, but a loving portrayal of its culture. You don't have to worry about that with mer people. It's all fantasy. It's fun. <laughs> all right, we'll go through your final thoughts, Andre. Again, ha hammer again why Little Mermaid uh, is better than Lion King and. Aladdin. Little Mermaid has a has a beautiful animation. Doesn't have to rely on computer effects like the uh, the Wilderbees. It has great animation. It started the Disney Renaissance. It has a great soundtrack that you enjoy for its version with the actual singers in the soundtrack. No voice actors being replaced by other singers or pop stars coming in doing remakes of the songs for you to enjoy the soundtrack. And it is a movie that set the precedent of what Disney movies should be like. So there would be no Aladdin or Lion King the way that you want them without Little Mermaid set in the bar, which they just nicely follow. Sarah? I truly believe that the previous Disney Renaissance films built up to Lion King being the great and best Disney Renaissance movie that it is. It has all of the aspects that you guys were discussing and more. And I really want to hone in on the fact that I do, I kind of want to fact check this, I want to see like who has the most like movie ticket sales, but it was the most hyped movie of the 90s. Like it is the 90s Frozen. It was like it's just like a cultural staple. It is the highest grossing. It, not, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's a fact. Yeah. There you go. I, was, I was like yeah. meant to look it up and I forgot yeah. to. So <laughs> there you go. It, it it just it was the peak, and I feel like the Disney Renaissance kind of declined after it. So it like built up to Lion King, and then kind of declined. I do love Hercules, but I just think it was the pinnacle of the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Jenny. I think that Little Mermaid's a good example of a proto-Disney Renaissance film where the characters are starting to be more fleshed out, but they're not quite there. I think Aladdin was really when it started to hit its stride. It has magic, it has memorable music, it has great characters, it has great comedy, and as I said, it does have that coming-of-age story and a human protagonist, and I think that's such a part of the Disney culture and the Disney like attitude towards storytelling. Um, I think that really does make a difference in whether or not it epitomizes the Renaissance film. All right.
Dan, anything to add? Do we need to get you a charger? No, my computer died, so I'm going to run oh. and get my charger after okay. this. But, <laughs> oh, no, uh, I, don't know any facts. I can say that the Lion King, yes, even adjusted for, even adjusted for inflation, it is currently 19th highest adjusted for inflation, just below the Phantom it, Menace. It, it made $300 uh, million dollars <laughs> at that time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So and, a lot, and, yeah. uh, and in fact, the sort of the irony is that nothing ever came back to that level. Mm-hmm. So that everything that followed the Lion King was considered a disappointment because <laughs> they couldn't reap those same monetary rewards. I remember that very clearly. Um, anything? Well, so as Dan plugs in, yeah, all right, that was, that, was that the main point? Yes. That was the main point, and uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right, uh, Mr. Malton, what do you think based on their arguments? Uh, it's like asking parents who's your favorite child, yep. you know, when you're talking about uh, films of this caliber. Of this caliber, that no one else was making, and you know there was no DreamWorks then because Jeffrey yeah. Katzenberg was still running Disney Animation, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so uh, they they had the, the 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 field virtually to themselves, and they were the ones redefining animation, redefining animated family entertainment, expanding the notion of what family entertainment was by actually getting adults interested, young adults in particular, and seeing these films. I remember seeing people in line opening weekend for Aladdin uh, at the El Capitan on Hollywood Boulevard, grown-ups without kids, on a Friday night show. It was like, unprecedented. Unprecedented. But it all began with The Little Mermaid. And it's not just because it's the first, the way Snow White is the first of, of Walt Disney's own feature-length films. Uh, I think I think that it's it's more than the prototype. It, it's the one, and I'm going with The Little Mermaid for that reason. All right, Andre Solja. Here we go. Two <laughs> really for Andre. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Little Mermaid's my favorite. I, I was I would have had a tougher time than you. I thought Sarah did bring some other. Oh no no! Again, it's, you it's know hard. we're we're, uh, we're Jenny was close, close, but it so. did. I think they got you on Aladdin a little bit, and you even admitted a fault in Aladdin, which didn't help your cause. But they had the same fault. In there. Yeah, that helped you, <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, like he had so much stuff. But yeah, that was a tough. I was in between, but I'll, I defer to him. I, I don't disagree. Little Mermaid is my favorite. Uh, you get the point. Uh, Dan, what did the poll say? The poll said, I believe, unless things change dramatically since the last time I checked, yeah, 62% <laughs> actually voted for The Lion King, 27% Aladdin, and only 11% voted for The Little Mermaid. Well, see, the, that's, uh, that, ma- that makes perfect sense because The Lion King is the most popular movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yep. So I, I, I understand that mm-hmm. at all, but that's not what we were debating. Mm-hmm. True. That's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. All right. Is that is that one officially over? It's official, yes. I like to publicly apologize. I, I love know, The Lion King. So <laughs> I, I love just want to make that very stories. clear. <laughs> I was like, I gotta be the one to say against the Lion King. You did good. Though. Flash a camera oh. in my face. Uh, <laughs> so hard. I got that. I Round do. four. Uh, this one comes in from Jack oh. Shipley, and this is a fun question. What we've we've handled? What is the best Disney song? We want to know what is the worst Disney song. Oh goodness. <laughs> Sarah, you're up first. Tell us the oh, worst goodness. Disney song. I've I've said a guy like you from Hunchback of Notre Dame just because it's a joke in my life that it's so bad. Uh, Like whenever I love Hunchback of Notre Dame and has an outstanding soundtrack except for this song that is so wildly out of place with like the grandeur of all the other songs on the soundtrack. It really feels like a weird sore thumb in the middle of the movie and I it also doesn't help that I don't much like the gargoyles um, so you know it's just the first thing I think of when I think of a terrible Disney song Jenny what's your pick <laughs> my pick was human again from Beauty and the Beast um, it originated in the Broadway show and then they squeezed it back into the special edition and completely ruined everything <laughs> um, it's, it's a horribly long musical number it's a very repetitive song and although I agree that the gargoyles one is very bad this one is also an earworm I can't remember the melody of the gargoyle one a second after I hear it but human again you keep thinking of the original song was 11 minutes long in the storyboards and it happens over a really crucial part of the movie where Belle and the Beast are getting to know each other and just derail it completely so I, I loathe that song interestingly <laughs> they chose not to put it in the live action yeah. oh version. good it it's not there yeah, yeah. they did oh, add I'm new songs but yeah not yeah, that, not that I'm heartbroken uh, Andre what's your song oh man the soundtrack to Frozen would be 
absolutely perfect if it wasn't for Fixer Upper, uh, the troll <laughs> song in Frozen. I cannot stand that song. For it to follow Let It Go, it's just like, you gotta bring it, and you didn't bring it. The trolls weren't even really that major of a part of the story. We saw them at the beginning do one thing, and then they came back just for this. And then the message of the story, of the song, is just really weird. First, it's, uh, hey, you got this dude, and he's not perfect? Don't worry, you can fix him. Just change the things about him. He's gonna be perfect. Don't worry about it. Oh, by the way, you with somebody else? Forget about that. You with this man now? Let's just marry him. And then try to force marry them at the end of the song. No. <laughs> Everything about that is not a good song. And it's it's sad to see this bad of a song in such a good movie with such great songs. I mean, everybody was Love is an Opening Door singing and everybody was Let It Go singing, but I have not seen that many Fixer Upper covers on YouTube. <laughs> All right, let's hear why Why do you think the other songs helped the, helped the movie that you didn't pick? No, I actually think Fixer Upper is pretty necessary to the plot of Frozen because without it... Um, it, it's really the first time that you see Anna and Kristoff like showing interest in each other. Without it, they would as just opposed be, like, to the rest of the entire time that they're in the movie together. No, but it really is when they start like they're like making eyes at each other a little bit. They're like, ah, oh. you know. Without it, Anna would be like, oh, I would. It never occurred to me that maybe Kristoff was my true love. <laughs> like it, it's kind of necessary for that. And the trolls are kind of like the 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 comedy of the song is that they don't like care that she's engaged. Like that is part of the comedy of it. And I don't think that the message is that you should just fix someone. I think the message was that everyone has flaws, and like if you're in if you're in love, it's okay. That was like a one. That was like <laughs> one sideline that they probably wrote in after they realized. Oh wait a minute! So they were like, oh, but it's a comedy is, song. It's, it's not necessarily it about flips. the message. And I do feel the troll song. It's obviously the worst song in Frozen, but yeah. it's not the worst song ever. I think it's very listenable. It's a little forgettable, but it's cute. And I like in the stage show, they bring out troll puppets, and I think that's really cute yeah. to watch. Yeah, and they also shorten the song a lot in the stage show. <laughs> they they, the they sing movie. Love is an Open Door like three times. Yeah, they they let it go, just stops the show. And the trolls are like, she's a fixer-upper. Great. And then they okay, look at the puppets. Okay, it's an hour-long show. They had to cut something. And it is and the worst song in Frozen, that's but it's not cut. the worst song in Disney. But As the, for... Or, um, as for the gargoyle song, mm -hmm. I do agree that it's really, really bad. I think its virtue is that it's very easy to forget. And I also would argue that um, Hunchback has a great soundtrack. But that whole movie had kind of the comedic relief flaw. The gargoyles were problematic characters for the whole tone of the story. But even if you took the song out, the gargoyles would still be in. Mm -hmm. um, Human Again, you take it out and the movie's literally perfect, as evidenced by the fact that the movie originally didn't have it in well, it and that, was better. And that's the thing. The, the thing about having a worse song is I feel like it's a song that you have to experience while you're watching the movie. The thing about Human Again is I don't ever have to hear it. I can literally watch the original version of Beauty and the Beast and never know it exists. But every time it plays on TV, yeah, like, every new DVD copy, it's forced right in there. No, it's not. You, you, they give you different, un unlike other movies like Star Wars, they actually give you like three different versions of Beauty and the Beast. You get the sing-along version, you get the special edition version, but you always get the original if cut. If you see it on ABC Family, you're gonna get Human Again, and if you see it on Broadway, you're gonna see an even longer Human Again. I'm a little upset because I love Human Again. <laughs> oh, um, tell us why. Well, I never heard it until I got the DVD re-release that they put it on, and I was like, this is so great. I'm getting all this backstory and like emotions from these uh, you know, enchanted objects that I care about, and I True. never got to hear how they felt about you know, being, uh, you know, cursed when they didn't do anything, you know? And I feel so, like you already understood their plight, though. You didn't need a song saying, I don't like to be furniture, to understand that someone might not like to be furniture. Just as like you didn't need I, a song to say, hey, these two should get together. They've been hanging out for the entire time yeah. of the movie. I agree that, like, it derails the Beast and Belle plotline, um, and I really want to be careful not to misquote but I feel like I have heard something about Howard Ashman really liking human again the lyricist that's the lyricist <laughs> okay I Howard love Ashman. Howard Ashman like that doesn't mean you have things. to put in all the songs he likes <laughs> I'm just saying he liked a lot of songs that got cut. You didn't restore Proud of Your Boy to Aladdin in the special edition. I also edition. love Proud of Your Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better song, and instead yeah. they restored Human Again My to the film. My overarching point is I remember how those two songs go, and I don't. I can't even remember how A Guy Like You goes. But A Guy Like You... Can anyone <laughs> sing it? I just no, know a guy like you. That's it. I don't know. But a guy like you is, even though it is the gargoyle singing it, 
it is talking to the main character. It is talking to Quasimodo in but that song. But it's so tragic. But also, it's, but it's, just you deserve love. And then right after, Esmeralda makes out with Phoebus on his floor. Which would not have much so of an impact sad. if you didn't have the song before it's to make it seem sad. like Quasimodo was set up to have that. So that song is very essential to that story. I, I don't would know say if, it's if the gargoyles were there and also didn't have a song, it would be even weirder. Yeah. Like, I don't want them there, but I'm saying if they're there and they don't sing, you're like, what were those gargoyles? Yeah. Like two if you're going to have essential time. characters like that, they have to have a song. You don't need a song to contextualize the furniture. Um, you do wait, need wait, a song wait, to contextualize whoa, whoa, whoa. the dwarves. In the same I respect, mean, the, the trolls. No, in the same respect and, with the gargoyles, if you're going to have an entire palace or entire castle full of these talking furniture and talking to more, they have to sing something. They can't just be Be Our Guest, and then it makes you But they service. don't. But, because they sang Be Our Guest. No, but Be Our Guest has nothing to do about, about them. That's all they're saying. Let us serve too. Be Our Guest is about them trying to impress Belle because they want to break the curse so badly. So you already can feel their tension and their desperation. But you don't need like a human again for ten minutes. But that's still <laughs> that. But that song is still about let me cater to you, Belle. We are servants to you, Belle. Human again puts an emotion to those I feel characters. Like you're and only that, surface level. They're no. like, Belle, come on, it's great here. We really need you to break the curse because we're furniture that's alive. Like you can feel. Well, they should have sang that <laughs> and said they're like, okay, here's we'll some food. The Try the great stuff. Time. Yeah. All right. Sarah, last thoughts. Overall, I think that both of, both Fixer Upper and Human Again are catchy, and on a like musical quality level, uh, a guy like you is just not memorable and a pretty bad song musically. Aside from its like place in its movie, which I also think doesn't help it. Jenny, final thoughts? I think that. Uh a guy like you didn't single-handedly ruin the film that it was in. I think Hunchback is a great movie with a lot of wonderful moments and a lot of moments that don't really make sense, that are flawed, that should be taken out. So if you have the choice to remove any one song, I wouldn't pick that one because the movie still wouldn't be perfect at that point. You'd need to tweak a couple more things. And Fixer Upper, I think it's fine. I don't, I don't find it like annoying or anything. I guess I don't go right to it on the soundtrack, but I think it, you know, you need a comedic song in your, in your movie. It's good. Andre? I think that a guy like you f- establishes singing from some of the main characters in that story, which are the gargoyles, and talks about the main character, Quasimodo, and like you said it yourself, it is the set-up song to make you feel good for Quasimodo to then have your heart broken when you see what happens in the next scene. So I think it would be wrong to take that song out, and it would also be wrong for the gargoyles to not sing a song. With Human Again, you are getting uh, an emotional side to those characters that you did not get any other way, and if it's a song that you don't really feel that good about, you have the theatrical version without that song to skip it. You can't skip <laughs> Fixer Upper. It's in there. It's with trolls are singing it. It has a weird message and the trolls are just weird themselves. I prefer Smurfs over them and I just don't think it's a song that you necessarily need for Frozen because you can figure out that the uh, on and Kristoff can get together regardless of that song. Dan, anything to add before uh, he gets his rolling? Uh, well, just so many people online uh, <laughs> chiming in. Colin Mira says, would it's, a smir- would it's a Small World count? Because also that. <laughs> oh, Small oh, World is amazing. Uh, Leslie at Leslie Gill says, the worst Disney song is So This Is Love from Cinderella. If this what? is oh, love, then love is song. short, boring, and repetitive. Oh, yeah. Wow. That well, well, makes I, the red man red. That, I would have also accepted. That is by far. <laughs> I put that on my list also. That is by far. I, so many people. Uh, Colin Mira uh, uh, also says, worst Disney song is a toss-up between what makes the red man red and say it with a slap. Uh, oh, but I what, what makes the red man red is by far the choice of the Twitter crowd. Uh, many people uh, point No Siamese cats on? None of these people <laughs> listen to the soundtrack of Pocahontas? What? <laughs> Which one are you going to play? You about this? That's a Which great song. bad guy song is worst? Oh, wow. <laughs> there are two. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't even remember them. There are two. David Ogden Stiers sings two songs. And Mel Gibson's song isn't any good either. Yeah. There are oh. three really I forgot bad about them. songs. Oh, I, love <laughs> I wish you forgot about them. I love you want to forget about them. I wish I could forget about them. I just sing Colors of the Wind and just run River Bend. Like those, two, those two great songs yep. in Pocahontas. And I love being in the car and going, Savages, yeah. Savages. <laughs> that Wait. sounds bad, but it's a great song to sing along with. So to. what makes the Red Man Red have a savage out of it? I don't like what makes the Red Man Red, but Savages is darn catchy, and it's racist against white people, too, so it's not racist. <laughs> savages is at least contextualized. Wow. Based on their arguments and what they chose, what would you pick? I'm so confused now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, uh, you, you, yours is Fixer Upper from Andre, upper, right. Human Again from Jenny from right. Human Beast, and A Guy Like You from Hunchback for Sarah. I'm going to go with A Guy Like You. 
Okay. Of, the, of those three, mm-hmm. I happen to like Fixer mm-hmm. Upper, so I wouldn't oh. even consider it. <laughs> it's a cute song. I wouldn't lose that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I, I don't have strong feelings about Human Again because I don't watch that version of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but, uh, and I'm glad they didn't put it in the, the, mm-hmm. the, the live action version. Uh, and uh, I, I, don't get, I don't get red in the face about, about yours, but it's not a very good song. Mm-hmm. I don't think. And no one could sing it. That was not a very good yeah. song no, either. No, yeah. 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 All right, sir, you but, get the point. But, but they're all better. Than those two songs in Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocahontas, I don't think it has a bad song. Pocahontas, all of them are good. Savages will give you, but I really do movie, like mine. I do like the digging song. Okay. Uh, mine I is really great, do. And mm. Savages is great. I, I don't like the We Are Cutting Ice song from Frozen. Hell That's what we call it. Oh, 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 she's saying, like, <laughs> Eagle, help me fly. And it's, it's so epic. It's what did the audience pick, Dan? 48% of the audience picked Fixer Upper from Frozen. People just don't like Frozen. Really? Yeah, people like Frozen. 29% yeah. picked A Guy Like You from Hunchback. 23% Human Again from Beauty and the Beast. All right. I might have led on Jenny on that one, but uh, I don't disagree. Uh, Leonard's in charge today. We are uh, trending towards the more recent movie in every yes. poll. Well, except for yeah. Mulan. Except for Mulan. So, Jenny, uh, this is point. Sadly, you can't win. I know. But you can still get a point for uh, bragging rights, so <laughs> yep. still fight here. Yep, yep. This is our last round before the speed round, and this one comes in from the, the, sh- the Chan DC 247. Um, who, in honor, since we did the princess, who is the best Disney prince? I'm the princes so don't often get talked about uh, I'm so in this bummed. world. So let's, let's let's see, Jenny. Who are you picking? Who's the best prince? I picked Prince Naveen. I think that um, from Princess and the Frog. From Princess and the Frog. Um, I think it's an underrepresented movie. I again, it's one I would say maybe isn't perfect, but I think one thing it did really well was its characters, um, and Naveen was one of them. I think he's a really strong character. Um, I like that like how much he grows over the process of the story. I think um, he's one of the kind of early examples of this new era of Disney movies trying to make both love interests equally interesting and giving them actual chemistry. Um, I like his kind of like carefree nature. I think it's unusual to see a dynamic where the girl is the serious one and the guy is kind of the the crazy, like flighty, playful one. Um, I like that because it's unique. I also um, like at the end of his arc when he's like willing to get a job and give up everything to help Tiana get her restaurant if he isn't able to be a prince again. I think that that kind of work ethic and self-sacrifice was such an admirable moment and it really like made their love story work so well. So yeah, he's my fave. All right, Andre, what are you picking? Uh, I went with Aladdin, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the diamond in the rough. I, I think that, that up until Aladdin, we had not had any real distinguishing characteristics about a Disney prince. Like all the all the, the prince charmings and everyone, they were just good looking drawn dudes <laughs> that the, that there was someone to idolize over. But this was a character, Aladdin, I mean, obviously with being the title of the movie, but also that just he was a very well-established character. He was uh, someone that people saw as a street rat, people saw as a criminal, but had this soft side that we learned about to see that he was not a bad person. We, we have him try to be a prince to impress Jasmine, but realize that just being himself, both as Prince Ali and then as a Latin, was what won her over. We saw his fun interactions with the genie. We saw his interactions with Jafar. We saw a, a full-on character. So that at the end of the movie, when you see a Latin and Jasmine get together, you feel something about it because you feel about both of the characters. It's not just, oh, the prince or the princess won their prize. It was, oh, these two people came together through this experience and now they truly love each other. And I think that's something that, again, was the establishment point for all future uh, male characters or male princes in the uh, in the Disney universe. Sarah? I said Flynn Rider from Tangled. Mm. Um, I view him as having all of the classic princely qualities of being brave and courageous and um, super handsome. First of all, a bunch of women all sat in a room and designed their perfect man, and Flynn was the result of that design process. That's true. That happened. Um, so he's maybe the most attractive Disney prince. <laughs> we show up again? I want to see. It. He's so good looking. Look at him. Yeah, they took like, his goatee yeah. from one celebrity and Ugh, his yeah. hair from another. All right. First of all, he's a great voice, and his character arc is Amazing. He starts off as a thief. You later find out the reasons why he turned to that life of crime. And it's kind of heartbreaking. And he gives it all up to be with Rapunzel and help her escape from basically, you know, indentured servitude, you might call it. 
All right, find it out, guys. <laughs> uh, I would say Flynn is is courageous in the sense of like he goes through all these adventures, but I think courageous in the sense of of you know his character. I don't think we get that into the tale. You don't I mean, think dying for somebody he is courageous was, w- at the end? But I'm saying up to that point, he was very very selfish in his ways of doing things. It selfish was, doesn't balance out like bravery. I though. mean, when you have a redemption arc, you can't blame them for how they are at the beginning of the movie. Oh yeah, but I think that my argument. <laughs> <laughs> but but with Aladdin, I think that there was a, a clear heart to him. That that was always there, even when he tried to do to you know, like I said, showcase himself as this prince that should be uh, married to. There was still his character there. There was still a heart to him that that was good, as opposed to someone who was not so good, who then eventually became good. So. We're gonna be on the same page about Aladdin because mm-hmm. we already were. All right. He doesn't learn his lesson. Also, He's a can liar. we like, pull up the reference image of Aladdin that we had? Because like they did you dirty, like whoever they did you the dirty with the screen cap. Like it's not the cutest much. Aladdin. Oh, let's yeah, see it. Let's it was, see. I know. I want to see it again. It was like my man it was like screen. a sad derp face. <laughs> Uh, I don't think to say to say that Aladdin was the first like prince with personality. Oh, I did not like this guy. Come on, he's mid speak. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they picked that frame. It's just to well, say, he's a fun dude. To say yeah. that Aladdin is the first prince with personality is doing a disservice to Philip and Eric. I don't think that they are better than Aladdin, but. You know, he wasn't the first prince with personality. What? (laughs) (laughs) Philip has that amazing, he's like, it's the 14th century, Dad. I'm going to get to know a girl first. You get a lot of Philip. You get a lot of sass from Philip. (laughs) You get a lot of, like, he's talking to his horse. He's making jokes with his horse. His horse has a name, you know? It's like, I also think being first doesn't inherently make you the best example of it. And kind of similar to my princess pick, what I was thinking for prince was, like, the full package. A prince is also a leader. Um, I think that the the kind of self-sacrifice we see at the end of Naveen, his ability to get serious and decide he's willing to work for things to make the people that he cares about happy shows that he would be a good ruler. Um, so I think that kind of adds to the appeal of Naveen for me. Also, he's just as dreamy as Flynn Rider. I don't but, think we actually get to see, like, Naveen yeah. prove that he's a good leader because he gets exiled from his country and then, like, doesn't go back to be the leader of that country. We don't yeah. know that he doesn't go back. His parents are at his wedding. We don't know that I'm he I'm sure they bring back. him back. They were, like, proud and crying and stuff. Look, uh, and then again, as with Flynn, with Naveen, again, someone who had very selfish motives to begin with that then eventually became good as opposed to being good uh, from the start. Also, we get a little bit of Naveen at the beginning, a little bit of Naveen at the, in, in the end, but in the middle, we just get a bunch of frogs. So, you know, it's hard for me to relate to a prince. Oh, but it's most Naveen the, the frog. You still get his personality. And I think another thing that makes him kind of unique among the other princes is that um, the princes always have this kind of like masculinity to them that I don't think Naveen really has. I mean, he likes to like sing and dance. He likes to have fun. He doesn't seem too much like he's trying to be macho. And I thought that was really refreshing to see a different sort of prince person. And I don't think Aladdin was trying to be macho either. I think he was just trying to survive. And I think he was just, mm-hmm. anything that he was doing was just to take care of himself. And as we saw, also take care of others, which is something that a lot of the others didn't see. And he was misjudged. Was he I taking mean, care of? He was taking care of. He gave the little apple to the kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, was like a boo. Part. You talking about a boo? <laughs> yeah, and a boo. Aladdin <laughs> never shows any desire to lead or be a, a sultan or anything. He wants to marry Jasmine. No, he but wants to just like wish himself royal it. instead yeah. of actually he doing wants to be anything. Wealthy he, learns, and he wants to marry a princess. But he learns that, that is not the way to do that. He learns that to be himself was the way to he do so. He learns to be himself, but he still only wants those two things. But he could have. But he could have asked for more things. But instead, he set his friend free. He set Genie free. Well, at the end, that's because so. he already had everything at that. Aladdin point. tries to <laughs> loophole his way into getting someone to fall in love with him. Mm-hmm. He tries to loophole his way into royalty. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This, I, just wanna, I wanna savor this moment. I've never heard loophole used as a verb before. I, just, <laughs> I, just, I, 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 I wanna just take it. Take that in. He tries to find a loophole to get someone to fall in love with him. No, 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 continue, because it's great. And and he does, before realizing it's a D move, stabs his friend in the back and doesn't choose to set the genie free at first. And that is messed up. But he redeems himself later. So she's yes. like fighting for a lot of so, things. Because I know you're coming for Naveen next, that's why I did that. <laughs> is a frat boy who doesn't want to do no work. And then he learns his lesson. He learns how to mince. Um, Flynn Rider's literally a thief who betrays other thieves, and then he learns his lesson. Are you Here's gonna the thing. like not They like, all learn their lesson. Yeah. But my but my thief was stealing not for just for himself, but also to help others. Where your thieves were stealing for themselves. All right. No, give us your final. Yeah, give no, us your final thief. thoughts. But tell us why your <laughs> prince is the better prince. Why Why is he the better prince over the other two competitors? Go ahead. And then we're starting with Jenny. Okay. Um. 
I guess it's just all the stuff I said before. I think he's um, he's he's more sentimental. He's more um, emotional than the other princes. I like that he's kind of in touch with that. He doesn't seem like he cares what other people think. Um, I feel like you really get a sense of him as a character, and you really root for him and Tiana because the way they work together is so nice and so refreshing. So, yeah, I think Naveen's the best. Andre? I think the thing that you got to remember about the princess is got to be about the personality, not so much the story arc. And the thing about Aladdin is that his personality was always there. It was just his opportunity was not. He was poor. He was misjudged. He had this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with this genie and did what he thought was right because he was told so many times to not be liked because of his his well-being. So therefore, of course he's going to want to be a prince. Of course he's going to want to be rich. But even with all of those characteristics, he learned himself and he learned through Jasmine that the way that he is is the right way to be and that's something that is distinct throughout the entire movie whether he's Aladdin or Prince Ali or whatever whereas the other two were bad people or <laughs> that then eventually learned oh hey maybe I should be good and be uh, be a nice quality so Aladdin had the prince quality from the start Sarah? I'm pretty shocked because I view Naveen and Aladdin as the most like lying, thieving, inconsiderate princes of all. I'm like, would put them at the bottom of my list. So I was like, what? But here's the thing about Flynn. Flynn was an orphan, so he also didn't have the means like Aladdin did. He was an orphan, and he he had only this one book character to emulate growing up, and it was a thief. But as soon as he can stop thieving, he does. He never has to lie to his true love, ever. You never question his motives. He, he goes through such a beautiful change during the movie that shows that it was all just a facade, that he felt like he had to be somebody. He felt like he had to be Flynn when he was really Eugene. And he's the best looking, and he's a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dan, anything to add before Leonard gives his ruling? Well, as you can tell, uh, as you can imagine, so many people have their favorites. Uh, Leslie at Leslie Gill, the best Disney princess, Philip. He slayed a dragon. Uh, that's emphasis on, not my emphasis. That was the her. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Charlie Ryan at Sunset Desire. People don't think of Aladdin as a criminal. He is a criminal. He should be a prince. He has no experience governing. So Charlie yeah. going oh, with the yeah. governance uh, angle. <laughs> wow. James the opposite Armstrong. of Andre's first yeah, argument. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. At Charm 7202, the clear answer is definitely Beast from Beauty and the Beast. And James White says Terrible. Power Terrible. Line was partially based on Prince, so that power counts. Line. It's Power Line. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. <laughs> from oh Goofy God. Movie. I yeah. would have yes. that if I could. Also, yes. I can confirm Flynn Rider was the product of what the directors called a hot man meeting. <laughs> they collected pictures from the internet and books and from women's wallets. They were very specific women's about women's wallets. wallets. Uh, what, they liked the guys. what they didn't like. So it was a consensus uh, of many different uh, opinions uh, led to the, the appearance of Flynn Rider. Yes. Wow. All right. Uh, Mr. Malton, go ahead. Based on their arguments, who is the best prince? I love Tangled. And I think it... Uh, I don't understand. I gen genuinely don't understand why Tangle didn't enjoy the same success that Frozen mm -hmm. did. I agree. Uh, mm, it has totally a great agree. score. It has great visuals. Uh, has a, a really terrific heroine and a villain, and a fabulous horse. Oh, oh my gosh! Maybe the greatest horse mm -hmm. in Disney history mm -hmm. for a prince. And then it has Flynn Rider, who has a great name. Mm -hmm. What a great name! I like Flynn Rider, so I'm going with Flynn Rider. Up, oh, Sarah gets oh. the points. All right, Sarah, you get an there extra go. point going in the finals. Uh, Jenny, you're going to still help us here, so okay. you're still around. Fantastic job. Though Naveen um, has a sense of humor. I like that. I yeah. He's funny. Uh, yeah. I would have gone with uh, Flynn on that as well. What did on, Twitter say? Yeah, what did Twitter say, Dan? Oh, yeah. Yes, let me pull it up. Sorry, I restarted my computer in between because I was having issues. Let's you got see me what with Twitter the facade said. And, and too, with the fact he's really Eugene. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a good, good closer. 60% on Twitter actually are behind Aladdin. Huh. It's because he's like this puberty crush. Yeah. Like, Flynn yeah, Rider exactly. with 32%. Uh, Naveen, unfortunately, uh, with 8%. Wow. If I just want to mention Steve bro. from Full House was the voice, I would have won. <laughs> yeah, he might have done it. All right, well, here we go. Uh, we are now going to our speed round for five final points. Uh, you will be listening as they give us their fast track. Uh, Sarah, you have not done a speed round. This is how this works. You will each have 20 seconds. I have five more points at the table for you. Uh, these will be quick answers. So I'm going to name a question. You have to answer quickly. If you say the same answer, it's whoever said it first uh, gets that choice. We all answer at the same time? Yes, you and Andre will have to answer at the same time. Uh, you'll get 20 seconds uh, to speak, and then you'll get 10 second rebuttals. But you each take your turns, and you will hear when your time is up by the uh, 
bell, and the time will begin speaking when you uh, time will begin when you begin speaking. So here we go. Everyone understand? First question. I'm gonna name two things. Tell me what's better, and uh, it's do it. It's just them doing it. Right? Just them. Okay, yep. Sure. Uh, so Sarah and Andre, speak out when you want to say who's better. Number one, Pumbaa or Timon? Pumbaa. Pum Timon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sarah gets uh, Pumbaa. And Andre, you'll be fighting for Timon. Yeah. Sarah, the time will start. Uh, you have 20 <gasps> seconds when you begin speaking. Tell us why Pumbaa is better than Timon. I find Pumbaa to be a much more relatable character because he has a quality about him that other people are disgusted by, which you know might not be the same level that we all experience every day that we like literally disgust people with our scent, but we can all relate to the idea that there's something that people might not like about us, but he is undeterred by that. He like lives his life to the fullest, and he's like, you know what, like, all right, it's all good. Andre Timon, time starts to begin speaking. And that, and the person that rises up the most is Timon, his best friend. Plus, Timon has a lot of humor, sarcastic wit. Uh, Nathan Lane is a great voice for him. He does a really good job. And when we get Lion King one and a half, he gets pretty much a central part of that story as well with his family. So Timon is a really fun character, and you can't ignore him singing, A lion sleeps tonight. You just love that character so much. Puma just farts. 10-second rebuttal, Sarah. Timon is just the, the person trying to ruin all of Pumbaa's fun. That's all I got to say. Ooh. Andre, 10 seconds. Timon is a fully fleshed out character. Puma's just there for fart and fat jokes. Oh, all right. They didn't even use their time. Uh, all right, we all get to chime in on this. Dan, do you have any thoughts? Oh, wow. These are actually pretty good. Uh, a nice couple of uh, arguments. I think that I, I think that Andre knocked down uh, Pumba a little bit more, so I, I might side with Andre. Interesting. Yeah. I thought the relatability and the undeterredness then coupled with the fact he just relied on the fart jokes too many times for me, where I got a little bit more from Sarah, so I was team Pumba. Jenny, what did you think? Um, I was leaning toward Timon, uh, just because he did rely on the fart thing, but he is kind of right that that's the major part of Pumba's character, and there isn't a lot else to him. All right, those are all our thoughts. Leonard, you make the final call. Who, who, who's based on the arguments, Pumba or Timon? Two words, Nathan Lane. All right, so he sold you on the, on the right, cast alone. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't beat him. Yeah. Andre, you're back in this. It's tied. There we go. First point goes to Andre. Three to three. It's not over yet. Here we go. Who gives the best ever vocal performance in any Disney movie? Ariel. Uh, character or? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Elsa. Okay, we have Ariel versus Elsa. Uh, Sarah, time begins when you begin speaking. Uh, Jodie Benson is an incredible performer. She sings Part of Your World like the same that she did over 25 years ago. Um, Adina Menzel is a wonderful singer, but she did not sing it as well at the Oscars as she does on the soundtrack, and Jodie Benson sounds exactly the same every time she sings Part of Your World. <laughs> didn't it? use all the time, okay. <laughs> there we go. It was not the best Oscar performance, it was the best Disney performance, and hands down, the Disney performance of Eddie Mazel in Let It Go in Frozen is obviously an iconic moment. That scene is a quintessential scene. Everyone replicated it, everyone covered it. It was so important to a lot of people, it meant a lot to a lot of people, so it, it has a, a cultural significance as well as its musical talent as well, and it's just, it's a really, really good song. 10 seconds for Sarah. The emotion that you can feel in Part of Your World I think is greater than any Disney song ever, including Let It Go. You really feel everything as she's singing it. But um, bump. Yep. <laughs> 10 seconds, Andre. Party World is a very cute song, and it works for that movie, but I think that Let It Go is a is a showstopper song. It really puts a certain part of the movie, people applaud it when you see it in the theater. It's it's a much more powerful song. All right, Jenny, let's chime in before Leonard makes his ruling. What do you think? Um, I would go with Jodi Benson because she's an icon, and also because I feel that Idina Menzel gives a wonderful performance, but does mostly just sound like herself, whereas Jodi Benson makes herself sound like a different age, a different person. I think it's a strong performance. Great, Dan, based Based on the arguments. Yeah, Andre had me at the beginning with Adina Menzel, but I think that uh, Sarah won me over a little bit, well, a lot actually, with uh, just the emotion and the song being more emotional and, and feeling it better. So I have to go with Jody Benson. Yeah, I was worried because she didn't use all the time, but then yeah. she did no, get a punch. She and then get some good Andre didn't get a, a good yeah. slug at the end for me, so I'm with you for Jody Benson, but uh, it comes down to Leonard. Based on those arguments, who are you picking? Jody Benson. All right, so we're on agreement, and uh, the song the songs are great. This is if this was put to an electoral versus a popular vote, <laughs> uh, it would probably go to Let It Go because Let It Go became an anthem. Yep, you know that that was embraced by the whole world, generations. 
I get that, and and it's a and it's a song that, that stays in your head. But part of your world is is very special uh, because of what it establishes about that character. And it was the, and and again, it was the first. It was the first I want song mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that Howard Ashman brilliantly set up for Disney in giving them this whole new idea of basing animated features on the Broadway musical template, which they, they have done with great success ever since. It's great. It's also a good karaoke song. If you ever want to talk about that, part of your world. Well, they both are actually. You haven't seen my karaoke of Under the Sea, though. Oh, so. all right. Oh. I, I want to see that. <laughs> all right, number three. Uh, here we go. I'm going right. to name two movies. Tell me, movies. This isn't movies. They're, they're also characters, but let's go on uh, movies. Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty? Cinderella. Cinderella. Sarah gets Cinderella. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Andre gets Sleeping Beauty. I'll take Sleeping Beauty. All right, Sarah, time begins when you begin speaking. Cinderella is a greater character, is that the question? Because she, um, you know, she, her... Movie, sorry. A, a better movie because you get to feel a lot more about the character. She she just wants to escape and, and live her life. It's not really for love, it's just for excitement and adventure. She's a literal slave. You get a lot more of her than you do Aurora, who's asleep for her whole movie. And all the songs from Cinderella are uh, great and classics. Uh, Dreams of Wish Your Heart Make is a Disney classic, iconic. 20 seconds when you begin you, speaking. You may get more Cinderella and Aurora, but it's about who's the best movie. And as far as the best movie, you've got the best villain in Sleeping Beauty, and that is Maleficent. She's a wonderful character, a very dark character, and brought a darkness to Disney that we hadn't even seen in some of the movies before that. Plus, she turns her dragon at the end. Phillips uh, get a slayed dragon, and we get no mice singing and taking the focus away from what the true story of Sleeping Beauty is. We're you say that like that's a bad thing. <laughs> I'm just trying to win. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's about the arguments. Yeah, yeah. I understand. It's not what we love. Ten seconds. Talk about taking away from the main character. The three fairies are the actual main characters of Sleeping Beauty. Um, it's just a better movie overall. Like it is such a classic fairy tale, and Disney made like the iconic version of it. And um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Ten seconds for Andre. Use them wisely. Cinderella is a good movie if you like princess movies, but Sleeping Beauty has the princess element as well as the adventure element with the dragon. Cinderella is just for people who like princesses and people who have foot fetishes. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dan. Uh, that that was very, I, I feel like Andre would have swept it. He opened himself up, though, to a little bit with the mice thing, and then she came back with the fairy argument. Still, I think that the argument about Sleeping Beauty having the extra dimension of the adventure, the dragon... I the villain. The villain, yes. Maleficent. I think that won me over, so I'm going to have to side with Andre on this one. I'm actually, that same thing. So, uh, Jenny, what did you think, though? Um, Cinderella is Walt's favorite princess movie because he related so strongly to it, and I think it ties so well into But she the didn't say that. Attitudes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know it was a movie. I thought it was who's the better princess. Okay. Based, based only on arguments. Um, I was actually with Andre because he mentioned the dragon and such, but I felt like he weakened his point with the foot fetish thing. <laughs> so I'm going to go Sorry. back to Cinderella. All right, second. Leonard, what do you think based on the arguments? Based on, well, okay, then I have, if I'm going to, am I playing by the rules? Yes, play, based on the, the rules, arguments. It's not your favorite. Based on the arguments, I'm giving it to Andre. I think he made a better, a better case for Sleeping Beauty, but I disagree with him. Yeah, that happens Cinderella, on the show. Cinderella yeah. is, is the better movie. And Cinderella is not only not just Walt's favorite, but here they were going back to Snow White territory and didn't repeat anything. Mm -hmm. They managed to make it completely fresh. Also, Cinderella as a character is a modern female character. Mm -hmm. Forty years before they got credit for making modern female characters mm -hmm. in the Disney films, mm -hmm. she she uh, never complains. She's self reliant. Uh, she's optimistic in, in spite of everything. And talk about villains. The stepmother yeah. in Cinderella is one of the most frightening villains pretty... because she's real. <laughs> yeah. Maleficent is 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 uh, is you know is fairy tale stuff, but that woman in in uh, Cinderella is real, and, and, and you you think you you hope you never meet anybody like that, but sometimes <laughs> yes. you may. <laughs> you just might. That's All right, so number true. two more questions here, and we're oh tied again. This is a silly one, but hey, let's see what you oh, guys say. Oh, this is a silly one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for identifying yes. that, Andy. I appreciate uh, it. What pre-existing franchise or property should Disney buy next? <sighs> DC. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Oh, God, I have to, like, think. Um, I don't... I, I was oh. like, I've never thought Ooh. about this before. 
Do you have another one? You no. want to give it to me? <laughs> Ten seconds. Oh. And, 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 you, and you didn't really mean that, did you? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Lego? Lego, okay. Ooh. Yeah, Lego, sure, why not? So Legoland would become an, another Disneyland. Okay, uh, got it. And the territory I didn't want to get into. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, time starts to begin speaking. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Look, Disney has proven itself. We were all concerned about how they were going to handle Marvel when they got that franchise, and they were able to do a really good job with it, so I could see them doing the exact same thing with DC. Maybe they would be able to play a darker edge, maybe on the Pirates of the Caribbean dark of, of Disney, more so than what we're getting currently with the DC dark, but still make fully established characters and a fully established universe. And hey, if they own Marvel and DC, who's going to stop them from putting them together? I think DC is too gritty for Disney to touch because they would never get as gritty as those movies need it to be. With Lego, the Lego movies that have been coming out are so fun and are appealing to a lot of older audiences and they're very like, you know, silly and cool and I think Disney could do a lot with it with their with the franchises that they already with the characters that they already own making them into Lego movies. We all know like the Disney Lego like it would just be the perfect match and be a lot of fun. 10 seconds. Disney had the opportunity to do something with Lego as far as owning it, but they license out instead. Warner Brothers has a very distinct style with Lego movies that would not be right for Disney because it's a totally different animation style, whereas DC would be something that they could do and just have to be gritty. Well, you would think that like they wouldn't be able to make a Lego Batman because they're totally different feels as well, but like there's no saying that that couldn't happen again with Disney, and it just opens up a lot of possibilities for video games and movies and theme parks. All right. Jenny, based on those arguments, who should Disney buy next? Based on those arguments, I'm going to go with DC because I think that it would be refreshing to see what they would bring to it because the current formula isn't working for me. So It's not. Dan? I think that uh, it was about Disney, and I think that uh, Sarah brought up the most important M-word at Disney, which is not Mickey. It's merchandising. She, she, she sold me for a more compelling vision of what uh, Disney would do with Lego and how they would use the brand. And I agree a little bit with her argument that the DC tone maybe is not a good fit with Disney. So I, I actually go with Sarah and Lego. Interesting. I thought, but I agreed with, the, it'd be nice to change it over. But you've sold me. I would go Lego as well based on the merchandising point. That's a good point. Uh, but it doesn't matter what I think. Leonard, today, what's your, what's your pick? Lego. Lego. All right. There we go. So Andre, but, you but need really to... none of the above. That's <laughs> why <laughs> so it was a silly question. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, we got to get this Andre to elicit a tie breaker. Oh boy. Uh, this is a little. You have to be creative. What classic story? Any story most deserves an animated Disney version? Oh God. Um... <laughs> I was gonna say something, and now I don't want it. What classic story? That they haven't already done. Right. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> Hansel and Gretel. Okay, there it is one. Um, 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 um. That they haven't already done? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Animated? Yeah, I was like, animated, yes. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> okay, okay. It is. A I mean, classic it's a, tale. It is, it is, bending you know. the word classic. <laughs> just just a sure, little bit. Uh, good luck on it, but just here we go. Uh, Hansel and Gretel uh, for Sarah. Go ahead. What Disney does best is they take a classic fairy tale and create the definitive version of that fairy tale. They have not done that yet with Hansel and Gretel. There's a boy and a girl in it, and a, it will appeal to all genders. There's a great <laughs> villain in it that's super scary. She wants to literally eat them. There's a lot of like great visuals that can happen with the candy and the forest, and it could even be a musical, and it would be great. And um, it's a classic. <laughs> all right, Andre. Super Mario Bros. is one of the most popular video game franchises of all time. Disney is one of the most popular animated franchises of all time. To put those two together with an animated Super Mario Brothers movie, I think you could bring the magic to Disney and the magic to Nintendo together, have something that would appeal to all ages, make a more established characteristic out of Mario, Luigi, the Princess, Bowser, and all the major characters. If you want to throw a song in there too, that'd be fun too, but I think it'd be a nice way to take a modern property and to give it a Disney musical touch. All right, 10 seconds, Sarah. The idea of Mario and musical and Disney animating it just does not mesh well for me. <laughs> That's it. I don't know what to say. It's just, it doesn't work in my head. I don't think it would turn out well. Andre, final 10 seconds. Hansel and Gretel is going to sound like Disney going back into the well before with something they've already done, whereas Mario would be something original that they could do with still bringing their Disney magic to it. It doesn't have to be musical, but it could be something that's very Disney related to an into the property as opposed to just taking another fairy tale and making a Disney version of that. <laughs> Ooh. All right, Jenny, what do you want to see? Oh, um, between the two? Yes. <laughs> Based on the arguments, 
I guess I would go with Super Mario. <laughs> I didn't expect to, but I don't know. I'm, I was picturing it the way he said it, and he mentioned all the lovable characters, and I was there like, yeah, that could characters. be really good. The world is really fun, so, And that yeah. movie was terrible. And then yeah, she the mentioned Disney the touch. scary stuff, and I was like, Hansel and Gretel is really scary, and that actually made me second-guess it a little bit. It is very scary. She is eating children, yeah. <laughs> which she said, Dan. Man, <laughs> this is a That's tough stupid decision question. to make. Um, it was my, I picked this one. I'm not playing <laughs> Oh, we have you to thank yeah. for that? <laughs> Based on those arguments? It's Super Mario Brothers, I think, for me. I would. It's like 51-49. I'd lean toward Hansel and Gretel, but I don't feel strongly don't either, feel either way. way. All right, yeah. well, Leonard, there you go. How do you, do you feel strongly either way? No, but based on <laughs> but based on the arguments, I'm going to go with Andres. Oh wow, you did it! <gasps> and, and I have no affection for Super Mario Bros. <laughs> All right, well I'm glad you did that because we're going to tiebreaker on a on a good question. Okay. You ready? Oh, this one's good. God. Okay. Good luck. Best Disney villain. Scar. Maleficent. <laughs> Oh, sell, sell, say confident, man. Maleficent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scar versus Maleficent. Sarah. Scar is so purely evil, he does a lot more than most Disney villains do with literally killing his own family. He has a fantastic villain song. He has great villain sidekicks. Maleficent, her whole motivation is that she doesn't get invited to a party. She has no villain song, and her sidekick doesn't talk. And she can turn into a dragon, but Scar literally overthrows a monarchy, which is a not an easy feat to accomplish. And yeah, Andre. Scar doesn't do a lot of the hard work. He actually has a bunch of hyenas do it for him. He just does things selfishly for himself as opposed to even trying to remotely seem like he would be a better king than Mufasa. Whereas Maleficent is someone who is scary, has a reason to be scary, is scary to a baby, and frightens the baby's death, and turns into a dragon at the end. And was also most, most powerful enough of a villain that decided when he made live action remakes of Disney animated classics that he went with her first. How do Ten I seconds. get some hyenas to work for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do so all the heavy lifting. Ten stuff. seconds, Sarah. The hyenas are idiots, and Scar is literally the brains behind the operation. They're literally idiots. They like fail at almost everything that they do. Maleficent, what is her reason for doing it? What is her reason for being scary? You didn't actually list one. She doesn't have a reason for being scary. Ten seconds, Andre. Her scariness is just her presence. Her to walk into a room freaking every, freaks everyone out. And Scar, oh, loyal as his hyenas, turns his back on him immediately when he has the opportunity. So he's always looking out for himself. Melissa was just evil to be pure evil as opposed to just being selfish. Whew, all right, Dan, based on those arguments, where are you standing? Mm, wow. They both make great arguments for their villains, I have to say. But for the pure uh, combination of non-hyena cooperation and turning into a dragon, I, I'm going to go with Maleficent. Interesting. Um, I would have gone Scar, because uh, while that was a good point, close. Very all close. the things Andre said almost made him more evil to mm -hmm. me uh, of just, like, even turns his back on them. Th so it didn't help the argument, even though she didn't say that. Uh, it just made Scar seem even worse, almost, in a way. Uh, and you did sort of paint a picture to me. So I, I was on the Scar argument. Jenny, though, where did you stand? Yeah, she also mentioned the villain song, which I feel like is so mm -hmm. important to Disney villains, so I'm going to go Scar. All right, well, it doesn't matter what we think. Those are our thoughts. Leonard, declare a winner. Who is the best Disney villain, Scar? or Maleficent based on their arguments? Scar. Oh! Tough call. <laughs> Tough call. <laughs> but I'm going with Scar. Because, uh, again, the Shakespearean quality. Uh, You've made that point before, I, uh, to be fair, not in this argument. But I, I think that's what it's about for Scar. Is that he, he's, he's a deep down villain. I mean, he's got layers of meanness we haven't even seen yet. Mm -hmm. Murders a family member instead of just scaring Plus, the baby. Yes, you made that it, point. And it doesn't hurt to have Jeremy Irons do it. <laughs> yeah. Be prepared yep. for the win. Sarah, congratulations. Thank you. Our first Disney fight winner. <laughs> declared by our celebrity judge. What an honor. Sarah Sterling at Sarah Snitch on Twitter. Anything you'd like to plug? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on YouTube at I'm Sarah Snitch and my collaborative channel that's also all Disney called Thingamavlogs. I, everything I do on YouTube is Disney, so if you enjoyed this, you'll probably like what I make also. <laughs> Check her out. Thank you for coming. Jenny Nicholson at Jenny E. Nicholson. Thank you for coming. That was so fun. Anything Thank you. you'd like to plug your channel? Yeah, my channel is just Jenny Nicholson. It's just my name. Um, and I talk about Disney sometimes, also Star Wars and pretty much any other movies that are out. Cool, and we, we will see you here soon. Yes. Uh -huh. Andre, uh -huh. Andre Meadows at Black Nerd on Twitter and your uh, YouTube channel, Black Nerd Comedy. 
Yes. Anything else you'd like to plug? Yeah, check me out on my YouTube channel, Black Nerd Comedy, for all Disney as well as all kinds of other random things. Uh, but I also, you can check me out on Regal Cinemas, uh, Catching Up with Andre. I hosted a show on there. And then on the full screen app, you can check out me and Katie Wilson host Kingdom Geek together. Yes, love it. Uh, Leonard Malton at Leonard Malton on Twitter. Thank you so much for coming. It's always an honor to have you. Anything you've got brewing? Well, uh, my weekly podcast, yes. uh, with, which I host with my daughter, Jessie, who was heard from before, which is called Malton on Movies. We do it on the Nerdist Network. And we have uh, interesting guests every week, and we have a good time. Please check it out. Go subscribe And there. my website, LeonardMalton.com, where yes. I write about stuff. Like, for instance, tomorrow I'll be posting my review of The New Beauty and the Beast. Ooh. Ooh. We want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, Dan Merle on the on the cam, at Merle Dan. At Merle Dan on uh, Screen Junkies Plus with Dan's Labyrinth. I was lucky to have Leonard on. We talked about uh, Billy Wilder. It was a great conversation. Mm-hmm. And today was a, a lot of fun. I liked it. It was good. March Mania. I, I'm March Mania. What we're doing so far. March Mania is great. And next week, Dan, you are doing the Champ's Choice That's right. on here. Do you want to announce who you want to challenge? I will. Next week is the Champ's Choice semifinal that, or the Champ's Choice uh, uh, match. This will be one of three fights that will determine who gets into that battle. Yes. Scott Mance has a seat at that semifinal. Yep. And now one more seat is available. One more who seat are you available. inviting for this battle? I'm choosing three strong contenders. Contenders to fight next week for a seat at that semifinal. Three contenders with great records, and those contenders are Hal Rudnick, Ooh. our own JTE. Oh, JT, you made it. And Koi Jandro. Wow, the speed speed round champion. If I if I'm gonna face one, I want to face the best. So they got to go through each other. They got to go through the semifinal. But one of those three is gonna get a seat at the semifinal round to fight for the belt. Those are the three that I want to oh, see. That's gonna be a good really fight. Really go at each other, and we'll see who emerges from that. That's fight. gonna be a good fight. March Mania continues. Stay tuned here on YouTube, and thank you all at home for watching. Uh, have a wonderful week, and uh, stay Disney. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad, but I had nothing else. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks to Quit for sponsoring this episode. For more information, click the link in the description. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast battle royale. Go ahead, try them all. If you haven't already, subscribe to Screen Junkies on YouTube to join us for future fights. Or if you prefer to listen on iTunes, click the logo to download an audio version.